Esoteric realm, that's what I want. Astral travel, because see, that's what all these people in the manifested sons of God are getting into. Okay, the see, here's your book I wanted you to tell them okay, about. The okay. Secret Teaching of All Ages. Okay. Hi, this is Greg and Donna Van Freyen. and this is my wonderful husband, and we've been married 52 years, sweetheart. And yeah. with all the kids, we've got five children, and we have uh, 12 grandchildren, wait a minute, three, 13 grandchildren, and 20, going to be 24 great-grandchildren, I believe. Am I right? Or did I, I, I mix know, one of those up backwards? <laughs> <laughs> when you get this age, you can't remember everything. Yeah. Uh, and you get so many of them. <laughs> anyway, uh, we love you. We're glad you're here with us at uh, the YouTube channel. And um, I wanted you to meet the wonderful, wonderful husband God brought to me after my husband died. And I was 19, went left with the three babies, three, two, and one. Uh, Greg Van and my darling husband. That's why my name's Van Proyen now. <laughs> anyway, uh, so we just wanted to share a wonderful testimony because it's all about the Jesus movement. Yeah. And how exciting, was that an exciting time in the Lord? Was, yeah, because a lot of people... Um like myself, I, I first got involved in the drug culture movement um, just partying. That's basically what everybody did before the whole hippie movement started um, because it was through the, uh, the, the presence of, of the culture of the LSD movement, you know, from the psychedelic movement of taking LSD that that's what brought on the whole hippie culture to drop out and get high or whatever and try to save the world by turning everybody on to drugs because right. we thought that if we could just get everybody high they would not think about making money and, and having things and that or whatever and just you know having the love for everybody and they wouldn't have wars, killings, this or that, but that's, that's we're always going to have that. That's because the Word of God says we would. So, uh, but it was uh, right after I started taking uh, LSD, which I started from a, get, getting it from a friend of mine that was uh, uh, living with in a big mansion or whatever uh, with uh, Timothy Leary. With some other people and because he was a teacher professor at UCLA and he was experimenting with his students giving them the LSD and uh, for the reaction of what they experienced which you know if you haven't done LSD or whatever you don't want to do it because it puts you in a different dimension that you don't want to go to because uh, you're opening yourself up to the the underworld or the demon activities that is there um, to suck you into it and uh, to live a lifestyle that is uh, becomes demonic uh, to your life and uh, so I but through all that I the bad experiences I have behind the drug uh, called out to God or whatever for, for help, uh, knowing that uh, he was the only thing that could give me peace. So, And I know you were telling me you had met so many people like your your best buddy that you traveled around and did drugs with. You, you guys went on a search and went through the mountains and the, went clear to Montana and you were you basically dropped out and you had your long hair, your beads and yeah. all of that stuff and you were determined to find God because you were thinking you were listening to Ravi Shankar and all the Hindu and Far Eastern mystical movements and mm -hmm. the music and it was like a pull to your soul that was taking you into the wrong direction because Satan heard your cry too. He hears pe people's cry crying out too and he, a lot of times he takes them in the wrong direction when they've got that longing for God that only the Holy Spirit can make you want God. 
and they just went the wrong direction, sadly. But um, so, and your friend, his girlfriend's uh, uh, friend was Janice Joplin, who sadly in, went took her fatal trip on drugs and ended up losing her life because yeah. the enemy would would have destroyed your life and actually taken you on an early grave if right. God hadn't reached down and with his mighty nail scarred hand and brought you out of all that darkness. But tell them, share a little bit, honey, about how dark that darkness was and how the devil set you a, a teacher. Yeah, he, in my going through a really bad trip on LSD, crying out to God for help and knowing that I was lost and uh, I knew that I could only find peace uh, by knowing God and I didn't know at that time or whatever it was only through Jesus Christ but <clears throat> in all that the devil heard me also crying to God uh, for help and he sent me an older uh, gentleman that was uh, a teacher of a cult of al he was an alchemist and uh, I was impressed by him because he had dropped out from a major business he had in Las Vegas. He, w he was the top printer for all the show cards in Las Vegas and just dropped out. Went, went into the mountains or whatever and, uh, to meditate and try to get close to God and thinking that he was John the Baptist or whatever and uh, but then uh, came out of the mountains thinking uh, that he yeah, was yeah. close to God or whatever, but he, he wasn't. He was just closer to the devil, and the devil was just using him. Uh, but I met him through another older friend of mine, uh, <clears throat> and he told me things about my life. I thought he was God sent because he told me things about my life that only I know God knew. Of course, the devil heard it also when I was a child, you know, real young, uh, having problems and that and just crying out to God and certain things that had happened to me um, that I was going through a as a child and all that, that uh, uh, he told me things about my life that nobody else knew. But, you know, my parents didn't know, nobody knew the these things. So it made me believe that he was God sent. So I started uh, studying under him uh, this uh, the mystical arts world of this uh, occult group or whatever as far as the alchemy and I, the secret I, I got a book by Manly P. Hall um, which he had a uh, The Secret Teaching of all, ages of all Ages by Manly so went, P. Hall. <clears throat> went he has his, a big philosophical Society. philosophical society in, in LA. LA and he was actually a student of Madame Blavatsky Nazi. who in the 1800s late 18 she died I think 1891 or something but uh, he was he was her main follower who received of many of her teachings and wrote uh, she wrote the book uh, I mean she was probably the greatest founder of that society in the beginning mm -hmm. but she was born in Russia and she uh, had a lot of, she incorporated almost every esoteric teaching and, and satanic teaching and angels of light uh, and miracles and everything followed her ministry. But she was like a, a modern day, like people get mixed up and think they're seers or prophets. And But she, she literally was his, the one he followed. And then yeah. he wrote, that was probably one of the most powerful books with mind sciences that's ever been written as far as occultism and I, was, I think out of that came Aleister Crawley and yeah. others and Albert Pike and so on and so forth but anyway so you were taking all those mind expanding drugs and mm -hmm. even that uh, professor that Timothy O'Leary he, he was actually using the students and experimenting yeah, they were dropping acid in, in his classrooms uh, and, you know, as they were tripping out in it or whatever, what their reactions were, what they would see, what they would feel, 
and that or whatever. So. Um, and I met you after you were a Christian, and I couldn't believe the stories I heard about your long hair and your beads and how you were real. You look like you were just into the flower power all the way. Oh yeah. But it was really the totally devil's power. Out. Because I had already before that had worked construction, and but I was still doing you know, getting high on the weekends, uh, smoking pot, you know, drinking and all that partying with my friends that, uh, so that's why I knew, uh, <clears throat> I knew all the people that did drugs because it was this, this being a small community at that time in the 60s, uh, later 60s, uh, uh, everybody knew everybody, you know, that were, was doing you know the pot and all that, and we were into the low riding thing and all that stuff at that time. Um, but uh, but then you ended up in Haight Ashbury in the big scene with all the, and you met yeah, that well, there was Timothy O'Leary, and then there was uh, Greg, the Greg Glories, and everybody came out of that Jesus movement. Yeah. I guess is what you were sharing. Well, it was it wasn't until after I started doing the, the LSD through that. Uh, getting it through that friend of mine that was with Timothy Larry, um, and uh, that's when I realized uh, also that I had a real bad experience and that's when I met that older ge a gentleman that became my guru uh, teacher into the, uh, these mystical arts world situations. Uh, I went in by through initiation by fire um, mm -hmm. and uh, it allowed Tell about that, honey. To where we were having a session with the, my teacher or whatever, and the, uh, we were sitting on a, a blanket and uh, had a, um, a pipe full of uh, uh, hashish or whatever that uh, just fell over out of no reason or whatever, just flipped over. The blanket started on on fire and uh, he uh, told me so just stay stay there don't move, don't yeah. move. Um, you're going to be going through and he was telling me these things without speaking to me through the spirit world or whatever he, he was uh, projecting his thought or whatever through to me and was telling me whatever you're, you're you're going through this initiation of of uh, denying of your flesh and to get closer to that inner workings of God uh, by denying yourself by going through this fire and you hear people of the Hindus or walk on fire hang on hooks or some of the other in South America where they walk on fire and that to uh, to prove t they're trying to prove to God or whatever that they they want to deny themselves uh, to be get closer to him, uh, you know. It, but going through that experience, I I I just knew, I I thought it was God because my whole arm was on fire, none of my hair was burnt or nothing, but my whole arm swelled up um, from the fire. My teacher there, he went ahead and put the fire. I said, "You've done enough." You've proved yourself and all that, but the miracle of not one hair on my arm was uh, was burnt or anything was like I thought it was a miracle and got that I was on the right path. So I just got into it even deeper and had some other bad, pretty bad experiences of denying my flesh of uh, certain things or whatever in in the spirit world that I was involved in, and but left that and took off with a friend of mine to uh, Montana, just wanted to get out of the, the area that I was in and, and went up there to Missoula, Montana. And, uh, but to back up just a little bit as far as I did get a, the teachings I had, but also the guy, my teacher had given me uh, the Bible. He said, well, you really need to have the Bible right along with these other teachings because it has to do, like anybody knows about the Masonics, the Masons or whatever, that they they also, 
tell you whatever you got to have the Bible right even with along with their teachings uh, because they use God's yes. word or whatever to try to twist it to try to get you to think that it's all right that it's because most people believe in the Bible that it's the word of God so but by having that Bible I what was that other book you had with you the te the, wasn't secret it the secret teaching of, of all ages by right, Manly P. P. Hall I paid Back then in the 60s, I paid 60 bucks for that book. I went down there to the society there, the, the, his uh, office there is where he has his big Esoteric library, museum, library. Uh, library yeah. and stuff. And because my teacher said, well, you really, if you want to really get deeper, people don't realize that the writings of these people, uh, satanic writings, whatever you, you can get, just like we do with the Bible, it, the Spirit of God or whatever will, will talk to you through His Word. Well, also the same thing with these writings that are talking about some of the spiritual things that the devil will bring out in your life. He'll speak to you through these writings. Because every time I'd start reading that, I'd say, I'd really delve into it to see what spirit I could get out of it. So that, that would, spir would, it's His would, spiritual power as you studied the false teachings, it, right. that spiritual power start gaining deeper authority and deeper and deeper, over you. Right. Just like when we read the Word of God, we get that strength from God's it's Word. Worth, you are getting strength from the underworld. From the underworld. So, uh, and another thing is, uh, you were telling me the thing that impressed you about him was how he was dedicated to forsake all. Right. I mean, these people can come like an angel of light because one of the things Paul warned us about in the Bible is that if he said in Galatians the first chapter if we are angel from heaven preach any other gospel let him be accursed okay. he said Paul said I we I you know that we are to be accursed he said it three times right. and that one chapter alone he said it if we you know and they're supposed to be apostles or prophets and teachers and whatever, the other apostles, if we are angel, a heavenly angel sent from heaven, preach any other gospel. There is no other gospel. There's no other truth. There is no other deeper manifestation than Jesus hanging on a cross and dying of a broken heart and pouring out his blood to the uttermost and to have his very head crushed with a crown of thorns. There's no greater manifestation that you'll ever have. There's not a vision that can compare. When Paul went to the Corinthians, mm -hmm. what did he do? He told them, you don't come behind in any gift. They had every kind of man. He said, but I determined to only know one thing, Jesus Christ and him crucified. Mm -hmm. For it's only the blood that secures our salvation moment by moment, day by day, experience by experience. So, and that's where the church is going haywire because uh, they think they're so safe, like me. That's why God put us together. Mm -hmm. It was so awesome that you had the deep, dark side in the, of the occultic powers actually setting your arm on fire. And actually, didn't he, the, didn't he, the Lord say, were you willing to die? I mean, the wrong Lord, <laughs> the pretend Jesus that was speaking to you that you thought you were following. He more or less said you were ready to die for him. That's what you told me. Yeah, that, that's what, because I was ready to die. That dedication. Let my body be burnt up or whatever, but the teacher, that teacher, whatever, got up, put the fire out, said, well, you, you've done enough. You've proven yourself in that. So, uh, but it was, you know, after um, the, he'd given me that Bible, which was a Gideon Bible that he took from Las Vegas, um, and uh, he uh, and now he's along to the Gideons <laughs> right and so they uh, as we traveled and I was in Missoula Montana with this friend of mine we were both searching for the, you know the real truth and having that Bible I just started reading it and uh, the Lord came through his word or whatever I had a born-again experience a miraculous unbelievable experience uh, I just wept and wept and wept knowing I, I, I met him for the first time in my life um, and 
uh, you know, repented of all the things that I had done in my life, and uh, but didn't know through this experience. Left Missoula, Montana, hitchhiked over. We were hitchhiking, which everybody did back in those days. <laughs> if you didn't have a vehicle. Uh, but didn't so, he come to you when you opened the Bible at that moment? You said you opened it, yeah. and the scripture, which I wanted to, you to share yeah. with the people, was that they, that you were in John, where Jesus talks about, I will send you the comforter, comforter. Right. and that your soul was finally comforted, and all you went through trying to find him when he was, you know, he was... The Lord was following you all around all that time. <laughs> yeah, because it, it, through all those situations I went through, I, I kept on hearing a s still small voice saying, "You don't have to go through all these things to know me." It was in in my soul thinking or whatever that, uh, it, and I just there's something about that or whatever that I, when I got to reading the Bible, got, went into the Bible, whatever that. It was that voice or whatever that really came down from heaven or whatever and, and lifted me out of my, it was like coming up out of the sewer. The sewer lid opened up and I shot out of the, the sewer or whatever into this bright light. It looked like everything, whole creation looked different. The trees glistened, even the air itself or whatever glisten like like gold or whatever uh, I just knew that I had that born-again experience which I didn't know for sure you know by the word what it was until I got to Seattle we hitchhiked over there to a friend of mine's uh, he had is that a, where Dave Wilkerson was no he, oh. that's where I got the book through that Quaker girl oh, yeah. that was in the commune after I started witnessing to the people there of my experience, what I experienced didn't have to get high anymore on pot or anything. It was through the Word of God. That, and she said, well, what you're saying, I want to give you this book. She was from Pennsylvania. It's where uh, David Wilkerson had a big uh, outreach there, ranch or whatever, to take in people from New York City to get rehabilitated in the Word of God. And she gave me that book, his book, The Cross and the Switchblade which was, um, Pat Boone made a move, he was, played David Wilkerson, they did, a lot of people had seen it because it was at the movies, it was called The Cross and the Switch Bite. But after reading that book and reading the testimony of all these gangbangers or whatever in New York City that got saved and transformed their lives. Uh, and you told me you immediately, you laid down your drugs. Yeah, I, I had, And your drinking and your... Well, I had stopped drinking before. Oh, okay. Once I started doing drugs or whatever, I didn't drink anymore after that because I thought that the the drugs were better than the alcohol. So but. now, how you were sharing? You took the hashish, the mescaline. Yeah. Uh, you did, and you did it like communion with the LSD. It became right. like a, a religious uh, that, going in deeper you know, and deeper, deeper into the occult. Right. You would just drop acid or so whatever was, and try to get closer and closer yeah. to God. And you said you, you did God, hundreds of trips. Yeah, it was uh, many trips or whatever of uh, just trying to, and I did. You should have lost your mind. Well, you almost well, did. Well, I thought I was losing my mind at that one time that, uh, and then, uh, but anyway, that the Lord uh, protected me through all that and uh, he even healed me because after going through all that, I had lost my equilibrium when I would walk down the street or whatever. I I, I would kind of uh, stagger because I I, I couldn't. Uh, my equilibrium was totally off from all the drugs that I had used and that. And after I got born again, I was back normal again. So awesome. So and you said it, you felt like this, you were being, like the Holy Spirit, like an oil came all over you and yeah. you, you said all of a sudden you could walk straight. That's all of a sudden, that's the mighty Holy Ghost. Right. Delivering power, hand of God. And I mean, that immediately happened. So, I mean, that was such a miracle. And then... But I left Seattle, though, after uh, knowing about 
the Crescent Switchblade and that, me and this friend hitchhiked down to back to San Francisco. We were going down, you know, to a familiar area um, and uh, it wasn't, uh, it was a Christian street worker, older lady that directed us, prayed with us and uh, that we met on the street after we got into San Francisco and directed us to Teen Challenge where it was at. So we went there and to try to get help in because we wanted to get more, know more about the Bible uh, and its truths. And uh, David Wilkerson was there with the filming crew uh, to film this documentary called The Runaway Generation. And it was through that that uh, they filmed me getting my hair cut and going through the transformation of getting, <laughs> walking away from that whole uh, hippie life uh, and just walking into uh, to walk with the Lord in that, uh, not to say whatever long hair, whatever is wrong or this or that, but I just didn't want to affi affiliate myself with that lifestyle anymore. So I made the transition back away from it. Um, it was so amazing how the sweet Holy Spirit though just spoke to your heart to turn your back on your life, yeah. your old life immediately. Old life, yeah. I mean, like immediately. Because you become That's, a new creature creation so. and your whole desire was to serve the Lord if it was only one soul yeah that's yeah so it just uh, but we had the teen challenge there directed us to another uh, Christian halfway house um, that a man had started he came from Ralph Wilkerson's uh, Melody Land Church to uh, uh, open up a house there by Haight Ashbury it was called the Clayton House because it was on Clayton Street, so they called it the Clayton House. And uh, from there or whatever, I <clears throat> decided uh, to come back to my hometown here in Lancaster, uh, California, because uh, I wanted to be able to present the gospel to all my friends, my drug friends, because uh, a lot of them, they were searching and seeking also. So I came back and started witnessing uh, to all these friends, and a lot of them got saved uh, and uh, started their life with the Lord. And that's how I met my wife here, through a couple that they used to sell drugs for me, and uh, LSD and that. And um, they got saved, and they started having Bible studies at their house, and that's where... Uh, uh, I met my wife, she came to the, the Bible study there, and at the time, the Lord, I kept on getting scriptures about taking care of the widow and the father's children, and I didn't know what it meant. Every time I would open up the words, that scripture would pop out at me. So, but after uh, meeting her at the Bible study, and she gave her testimony how the Lord has kept her, I think it was seven years at that time, after her husband uh, was killed in a car accident and uh, she had the three kids. So we ended up, um, and the Lord spoke to me that night or whatever, said I've sent you to, to marry her, and uh, which is pretty unusual for, it's hard to believe for some people, whatever, but the, I wasn't even seeking a wife. I was just seeking him to do his will in my life and uh, but his will was for us to be married, which we were married five weeks later, and that's been almost 52 years ago, so that tells you it was God's will. Amen. <laughs> hey, yeah. Because a lot of people don't make it. We had so Ten much in common in a strange way, because I was already preaching the gospel yeah, you were after preaching, my so. husband got killed, and the Lord called me to preach, and my family came from right after the Zeusa Street revival, clear back to my dear grandma, with 11 kids living on a farm, went through the depression with, uh, as a widow herself, with seven little kids left to raise by herself. And then her grand, all her grandchildren, she had an awesome experience in the Holy Ghost right after that in a Pentecostal church in the Midwest. And she, I had an experience where she fell into the power of God and God said your kids, your children and your children's children will preach the gospel. And my one, my one uh, cousin 
uh, her and her husband, Wesley Hurst, with the Assemblies of God, rescued David Livingston's mission station when it was about to close down. They answered the call of God and left with three kids to Africa, and her sons became all missionaries, and the one was a worldwide missions directory with the Assemblies of God. But my whole family and all my, I think of, oh, so many of my cousins preach the gospel, and their children preach the gospel. And here I, you know, it, and I just came real, and I, when I really came to the Lord the year before my husband was saved, because I was kind of running from the Lord, and... No, but after, a year before he died. Yeah, I mean, a year yeah. before he died, excuse me. I got my tongue twisted. At this age, it gets twisted <laughs> anyway. <laughs> anyway, but, uh, so, um, I just, you know, uh, the Lord had took me through a terrible time, uh, a, a hard, a very hard, hard, broken life through um, abuse and a, a marriage that was very horrendous. And then, the, and then he was killed in a car wreck. And um, and anyway, to make a long story short, um, I just prayed all the time for God to send me a husband. But uh, right before that, right after I had really surrendered to Christ was when I had a similar experience, only it was in the Pentecostal movement called Manifested Sons of God. But that was years and years ago. That's been like 59 years ago. Anyway, but uh, this lady came into our church, same church you and I went to after you came up here and we got married and went to Brother Goodell's church. But making long story short of it, you know, if you're a Christian, you think there's not deception everywhere. It can come into your church overnight. It came through a lady who claimed to be a prophetess, told me how special I was, and I had already received the gift of uh, prophecy and moved in the gifts a lot, and um, the Lord called me to preach right away uh, after my husband died, and uh, I'll never forget it. That was an awesome experience. But when after you shared all that you shared with me, I knew God was putting us together because I had, for a short season, started to get deceived. I went on a fast, and the Lord revealed the whole deception. And he said, this will be the last deception that you'll see, and it will come through to America. It's going to be a spirit of Kali and Hinduism and mysticism. I didn't even understand it. But then when I got in deep into when you get into things that are wrong, that are really deep, you think that you're, you actually are so deceived, you start getting deceived, like you said, little by little, I start reading all this manifested sons of God doctrine, and every time, so then whenever I would pick up my Bible, I would see the same twisting, because it's a spirit of error, and it's so powerful, because it comes from, it says doctrines of devils, that the people wouldn't endure, sound doctrine in the last days, and it comes through doctrines of devils. So when you thought you were seeing the angel of light and you were walking with the Lord God, the right God, he wasn't the right God at all. He was the God of this world who's blinded men's minds, mm -hmm. lest they believe the glorious gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. And that's what was going on with me, only it was the Pentecostal realm, because the Pentecostal realm is the forefront of the battle. And so if he can get some of the leaders twisting and going in that because you become like God, and some of the scriptures they use were twisted. They're twisted, just real, real slightly twisted. But it's like a little bit of arsenic will kill you. So they mix it with a lot of truth. It's not just they mix it with a little bit of truth. It's so deceptive because it's really an elite realm of the Pentecostal movement, which... I believe, you know, there's going to be a great move of the Lord to harvest the souls of the end times. So he has to come through the leaders and the ones who are uh, anointed and appointed and chosen and called of God. And if you get into those realms and just ever so slightly, all of a sudden, even when you're reading your word, it, there's twistings that happen when you read their doctrine. Because it's real, real close and it's clever. That's why... The Lord says in 2 Thessalonians, he says that, you know, he talks about that God, because of the wickedness, then God sends the delusion 
Why? Because they loved not the truth and they loved the pleasures of unrighteousness. So the criteria of truth is God's almighty word through Jesus Christ. And when I even moved in the gift of prophecy and still do, I never go outside the boundaries of what's already written. It's a boundary. That's why Revelation 19 said that Jesus, the spirit of prophecy, is Jesus who John the Baptist declared, you know, that he is God. He's the Word. And the Word was God. And the Word is God. And so the boundaries of the Word are the criteria of all because that is Jesus. So revelations and dreams and manifestations. There's never been a manifestation like Jesus dying on the cross and his arms are outstretched wide, ready to embrace you and all your pain, your sorrow, your sufferings. As we walk this journey, you know, and have broken hearts, broken souls, broken relationships, but, you know, Jesus paid it all, the old song, all to him I owe, sin has lost its crimson stain. Jesus paid it all. He paid it all. He paid it in full. Oh, my friends, let the blood of Christ flow over your soul. And, you know, in the book of Revelation, it talks about the Laodicean church. It's a deceived church. Jesus said, you say, I'm this and that and the other. He said, but I say, it's not important what we say about ourselves. Even this is where we're getting all this false teaching. You say you're rich and wealthy and you're this and that. He says, but I counsel you to buy me gold, like gold tried in the fire. Because, because the truth stands the fire. The truth will stand the fire, and it reveals, you know, all truth. And so, when the Spirit of the Lord comes, He never moves outside the realm of the Word. He always stays in the Word. Even, even when people use the gift of prophecy or everything, it's always within the realm. It's already done. It's all, when he, Jesus said it's finished. It's finished. All of it's finished. It's entire, wanting nothing. The word of the living God is wanting nothing. It needs no further revelation because that's building on sifting sand. If the church doesn't get out of this moving by dreams, visions, and revelations, which are true, and there is true visions, realms like that, but we're to try it by the word of God as of by fire. We try that word, that vision, that manifestation because the greatest manifestation that you can't go any deeper into any higher. It's an elite form. That's why Jesus said in Revelation third chapter, second chapter, I mean, he said, I hate that I hate the doctrine of the Nicolaitans because it created a hierarchy. But thank you, Lord, the rail was ripped from top to bottom. And just like the tabernacle of old Greg, they were not to lift a tool upon the altar. They were not to put man's hand to that altar. They were not to make steps up to that altar. But you come on common ground. We all come as a sinner. We all come on level ground to the cleansing, flowing sacrifice of the blood of Jesus. Won't you let him cleanse you from all unrighteousness? That blood has a power because it's so invisible and so powerful you know what? All you need to do is call on the blood of Jesus each and every day and know that freedom of soul and sins forgiven. And you know what? You'll walk in newness of life and those things that you loved and all that partying, darling, and all the things that's in our past, my dear friends, it goes away. It's gone forever, forever washed in the blood. I love that scripture, Revelation 1, I think it's the fifth, fifth verse. Where he says, unto him who loved us and washed us in his blood. Just be say, Lord, that's a simple thing. You know, it's so simple, everybody misses it. Jesus, wash me in your blood. Make me clean. Make me my sins whiter than snow, though they be as scarlet. So, Jesus paid it all. Ask him into your heart today as supreme king and soon a king of the universe, but soon coming king. He's our Passover lamb. The Passover lamb shed his blood shed from the foundations of the world. So, love you. Come back. We're going to finish this love story, by the way, about our how we went on our missionary journeys, moved 70 times, and how 
we pick up on a dime. You know what? Greg, we meant that. We said we said we'd go for one. Just one soul, no matter where it was. Has it always sense. been easy? But you know what? We love all of you. Come to our channel and hear the rest of the story. <laughs> yeah, the Lord bless. We didn't tell about Kimmy. Yeah.